Um, the next uh, presentation is by Daniel Jones and Kelly Heaney. And uh, they'll be making their way up here. Um, both of these gentlemen have enjoyed positions, maybe not enjoyed, but taken on positions with their tribes uh, and also within, within government. They have a, a wonderful legacy that they will share with you. So, Dan and Kelly, please. I want to thank the committee for giving us uh, 40 minutes because we were past tribal leaders, tribal uh, chairmen and uh, chiefs. Uh, we need that time. It's, it's really uh, an honor to, uh, uh, to become a finalist here for what this represents. Uh, we are deeply moved for this fact. Uh, I'm going to lay out the... I'm going to lay this piece out in its elements so that you're, you can understand each of the elements one by one until you see the whole piece together. The first element you're seeing will be its base. It's uh, approximately 12 feet in height, uh, 8 feet wide, so it has a small uh, footprint, really. It uh, will extend under the ground in concrete and steel to frost line and then Hopefully, since we're in kind of a marshy or wet area anywhere around here, we can uh, extend pilings down to, to the bedrock. These are uh, five branches of the United States military and one officer that's uh, a female officer uh, from the Army in this case. But there was a real challenge in how we uh, be inclusive of all tribes. You've got 560 tribes in America. So it, uh, basically, in looking at some of the promo from the Black Legging Society and using the war bonnet with the military jacket, it dawned on us that each of the eight regions of American Indians, including Hawaiians, can best be represented and many areas represented by their headdresses. And that's exactly what we did. If you'll see that each of these headdresses come from various regions, some headdresses, like the war bonnet, are shared by several regions of the United States and becoming more and more, but we were even inclusive of, of Hawaii, uh, which is this, this piece on the uh, right center. Now this piece here is uh, the woman is blessing the child, she's protective of the child, she'll be approximately eight, eight feet, so larger than life size. Um, the she represents nature. She's protecting, like I said, the child the child represents the future, and that's very important. Um, the little bundle on its back, the child's back, represents uh, the spiritual instruments that we use as a people, our pipes, um, various uh, medicines. So she's taking that into the future. She's being protected by the earth. One of the elements that we needed were uh, to get really into the history, because the history of the American Indian and U.S. military is, you know, from the beginning, very beginning and even before America was America, to today, to, you know, the tragedy of a young Hopi woman be the first person to lose her life in Iraq. So uh, these plaques give us, you know, that ability to talk specifically history, information, accomplishments, uh, contributions, major events that happened. And when I speak of uh, contributions, um, American Indians, a lot of people don't realize, they join the military at a rate of 1 in 10, when the national average is 1 in 100. So American Indians are far more patriotic than other groups within America. The code talkers might be, there's a lot more than just the code talkers we hear about generally. There's, the United States government has used them extensively through time. The Congressional Medal of Honor winners, uh, some of their stories will, you know, curl your hair. Uh, they're wonderful, um, powerful, and they really need a place. Another one such as uh, the, a lot of people don't realize when George Washington was here uh, at the Delaware at Valley Forge, 
if it wasn't for the fact with his starving soldiers that the Oneida Indian Nation brought them 300 bushels, bushels of corn, we might all be Canadians today. So American Indians have had a powerful, powerful impact on, on, with the military, on the military, with them. Of course, we want to work with the museum on these particular things uh, because they have the source of the historical source that we need. The other thing is uh, our piece is interactive. We intend to use uh, QR codes and uh, NFC tags where a person can just touch their phone to, uh, to pieces that will be around. There's no maintenance required. And then you can really get specific. You can get into in depth on the history of certain things that we're talking, whether that might be about the Marines or Indians in the Army or Indian, Indians in the, the Navy. Okay, this is the piece together. You're looking at two sides, the west side and the east side of it. But now you understand the, uh, the meaning of these elements together. The soldiers protect they fought for the, the name of our piece is, uh, they fight for their country. So they're protecting earth and future generations. That's the center point. And then these plaques will allow us to get right into uh, detail. This is where we would like to put it, where there's a little area in front. We're certainly open, open to that. You can see down from the top that it's on a hexagram. Hexagon, uh, that's very specific to Indian tribes as well, uh, the six directions. But a uh, tiny bit about myself. Um, I'm an art, this is some of my artists. This is some of my artwork here. I do, I've been working in bronze exclusively the last 10 years. I've always been an artist, uh, so that's just a part of, uh, of who I am. I did a little film work at, at one point in time, but as Will Rogers said, that's just moving pictures. So uh, who I will really have the opportunity to introduce at this point in time is uh, a good friend of mine that I've worked with. I know a few artists in the world who have the body and the size of work that this gentleman does. It's certainly uh, my uh, honor to introduce at this time Enoch Kelly Haney. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, that better. <laughs> I'm Kelly Haney. I'm full blood Seminole Creek Indian. The reason I say that is because I'm the only full blood American Indian that's ever served in the Oklahoma legislature. And that was quite a task. People asked me, said, uh, why, are you, why are you running? Indians can't get elected. And I said, well, you know, I have this belief it's not the color of the balloon that determines how high it goes but what's inside. And I come from good people, strong people. I come from four generations of tribal chiefs, uh, myself being one uh, at one time. So uh, I understand what it is and who I am and where I come from. When I was growing up, 80% of the language in, in our community was in our native language. And every, we went to church, it was all preached in our native language and sang and stomp dances and so forth, you know. Uh, and so being in first grade was awfully difficult for me. But I finally got through that. But you know, and, and this is for the young people or people who have problems. Uh, my dad had a third grade ed education. My mom had an eighth grade education. And at one time, uh, we lived, there were seven of us, six or seven of us, and we lived in two rooms. The other room was a kitchen. And you know, for some reason, it didn't bother us. It just, all, many of my people live like that. So we didn't see it as uh, difficult or even being poor. We just lived it life. So it's, it's a good thing about the way we Native people live and stay together as a family unit. That's, that's good. So uh, I started out as an artist. My mother tells me she saw me working when I was, in the, uh, uh, when I was two years old. And I remember doing a head of Abraham Lincoln when I was about six from the red clay that was in front of my house. And so I, am, I was an artist before I, I knew what an artist was. The creator gave me this ability, and that's who I am. I've traveled a long road. I uh, uh, was in the Oklahoma legislature for 22 years, and I finished as chairman of the Appropriations Committee, which means I, I get to do what I want to do, pretty much. Uh, 
We're building a, we're building a uh, $180 million cultural center in Oklahoma City. And that came about as my being in the legislature and passing the legislation to do that. So I, I walk many trails, but uh, after all this, and I was a tribal chief for a while, and after all of this, my life has just gone full, full circle. I'm back to being an artist. That's what I do. And I have, uh, in fact, uh, uh, in about three months, I'll be taking a 10-foot sculpture to Beijing. It goes out to uh, you know, other artists, military artists, or historian, art historians that we want to. We're, we're, still, we're, uh, we're still planning on that. But it's just also the fact that this is a team between him and I, and we got a lot of people working under us that we're just now putting together. Um, Kelly is one of the, the leaders, one of the chiefs of that, uh, like I am. So yeah, we're hands-on, but we also have other people that we count on who are experts in the fields that they're in to, to help us with this. I hope that answered your question. Any, <clears throat> any more questions? I think that, uh, thank you, Dan. Okay. Now, now you can go sit down. I, I gave you your 40 minutes. <laughs> like I say, always pushing the envelope. Um, uh, thank you for that question, because I think it's, it's real important. Uh, one of the deliverables that we will get at the end of stage two is each of these artists will bring uh, with them their team, um, or at least the names of who those teams are. Uh, so that there are uh, architects, engineers, other artists, things like that, that will be collaborating with them towards implementation. We will have uh, those folks uh, uh, assigned uh, with them. That then gives us the ability to move this project into implementation, into construction, because we'll have the team assembled around them to support them if there are uh, professional or technical issues that they can't handle themselves.